Tim's Log, March 20th. Still here on this tiny island at the equator, located at zero degrees latitude. The time-lapse camera I set up this morning is recording the sun's path across the sky. Cassie and Rita are doing the same thing at 40 degrees north latitude. And Moby's hanging out at 90 degrees latitude at the North Pole. All this to answer a letter. Dear Tim and Moby, What do solstices and equinoxes have to do with the seasons? From Abby. The four seasons are caused by the tilt of the Earth as the planet orbits the sun. This tilt makes sunlight hit the northern and southern hemispheres at different angles during Earth's year-long journey around the sun, causing the changes in temperature and amount of daylight that define the seasons. Four times a year, Earth reaches special points in its orbit where its axis of rotation lines up perfectly with the sun to produce some really cool effects. And today is one of those times. In the northern hemisphere, March 20th or 21st is the vernal equinox, the first day of spring. Right now, the Earth's axis is perpendicular to the sun's rays. Both hemispheres are the same distance from the sun, which means they're both receiving the same amount of sunlight. This will happen again in six months, around September 22nd or 23rd, at the northern hemisphere's autumnal equinox, the first day of fall. Good point, Moby. When it's the vernal equinox in the northern hemisphere, it's the autumnal equinox in the southern hemisphere, and vice versa. In other words, the seasons are opposite in the northern and southern hemispheres. During an equinox, the sun looks like it's moving directly over the equator. Here at the equator, the sun rises straight up in the east, reaches the zenith, the highest point directly overhead, and sets straight down to the west. As you go farther north, the sun's arc is lower in the sky. And way up at the pole, the arc is pretty much flat on the horizon. Except for the poles, every place on Earth gets 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night which explains the word equinox. It comes from the Latin words equus, meaning equal, and nox, meaning night. After the vernal equinox, the northern hemisphere points more and more toward the sun. From where Cassie and Rita are camped out, the sun's arcs get longer and higher, which gives us hotter days and more daylight. About three months from now, on June 21st or 22nd, we'll have the longest day of all in terms of sunlight, the summer solstice. That's when the northern hemisphere is pointed almost directly at the sun. It's the first day of summer, and the farthest north the sun rises and sets during the year. After that, the sun will start rising and setting more and more to the south. The days get less and less daylight, and as we pass the autumnal equinox, colder. Finally, on December 21st or 22nd, we'll have the day with the least amount of sunlight, the winter solstice, where the northern hemisphere is pointed as far away from the sun as it can get. This is the first day of winter, and the farthest south the sun will rise and set. Where Cassie and Rita are at, summer daylight can be as long as 16 hours, while winter daylight can be as short as 8 hours. Here at the equator, where the tilt of Earth's axis doesn't affect the sun's path as much, daylight stays pretty close to 12 hours all year round. But the tilt has a huge effect at the poles. The pole facing the sun gets six straight months of daylight, while the pole facing away from the sun gets six straight months of darkness. Oh, the word solstice comes from the Latin words sol, meaning sun, and sistere, meaning to stand still. Throughout the year, the sun's path through the sky keeps shifting either north or south right up until the solstices, where it seems to stand still for a moment before shifting back in the opposite direction. Yeah, humans have paid attention to this stuff for thousands of years. Ancient civilizations timed their farming and hunting to the changing seasons. That's why solstices and equinoxes became important dates for celebrations and holidays in so many cultures. Um, it's about one equinox and two solstices too early for that one. Hello! 
Having traveled back in time to explain the history of the best, Tim and Moby are accosted by a gang of street urchins. The little scamps relieve Moby of one arm, and with it, his built-in time machine. Stranded in the 19th century, our heroes have but one hope. Locate Tim's great-great-great-uncle Odgar, the eccentric genius behind the Chronopticon, a device rumored to give its users control over space and time. Well, this must be the place. Uncle Odgar? Hey! Moby? You found it! Gone time traveling, oh rare bit. We're saved. Hmm. Controlling time and space may be tougher than I thought. Focus on me, you mechanized monster! Do you have me? Good day. My name is Odgar Rarebit, and I am speaking to you via magneto-optigraph, a technology through which images are stored on photoreactive wax cylinders and... and... and anyway, it's, it's all very complicated and ingenious and only I understand it. If you are viewing this, it stands to reason that you have discovered my Chronopticon. I congratulate you. However, before you assume control of the most highly advanced mechanism ever constructed, you must complete all five of its introductory forms or levels. To help me explain, I present Proteus, the second most highly advanced mechanism ever constructed. Now then, to span time in my chronopticon, you must master the astronomical concept it is manipulating. For example, the first level, in which you will move hours, is concerned with the Earth's rotation on its axis. Proteus, engage the machine! To complete this level, you must understand the relationship between the Earth's rotation and the time of day. Just consider, does the sun really move across the sky, or is something else at work? Note to self, could accelerating the planet have other unforeseen consequences? After all, Earth's rotation affects the ocean's currents, the planet's magnetic field, even the movement of tectonic plates. Dog, all right, Proteus. That will do. Pro Proteus, I'm not feeling well. Stop the machine, you technical terror! <laughs> 